Hello, my name's Tom and welcome to this special episode of Historic Cooking. This episode we're doing something a little bit different. It's a special episode tying in with a two-tone exhibition. Make sure you don't miss out this exhibition. It's free and runs until the 12th of September. You can find out more about the exhibition on our website and there'll be links down below. Creating this recipe, I got help from Esme, who owns a restaurant in Fargo Village in Coventry. If you would like to hear more about Esme's story, then check out my podcast. I have a bonus episode where I talk to Esme herself about her food and about where it came from. This special episode, Linking with Two-Tone, it gave me the inspiration of Two-Tone is a fusion of English and Caribbean kind of music. And I wanted to replicate that in food form. Classic roast dinner with the twist and the fusion of Caribbean food. We have got some lovely spices from Esme's. The jerk seasoning, which we're gonna use for the chicken. The all-purpose uh, seasoning, which we're gonna use for our roast potatoes. A jar of marinade. We'll have a little taste of that and uh, see where it's gonna go in our dish. So today for our main, we are gonna do a roast chicken. We are also doing a nut roast as a side, but if you wanna make this dish vegetarian, you can make the nut roast as your main part rather than as a side. We're gonna spatchcock the chicken today, which means we're gonna like flatten it out. We're gonna take the backbone out and uh, lay it out flat. We're also gonna cook it on top of some onions, peppers, and garlic. So any bits that we take off, we're gonna put that into the gravy as well. Um, if you're a little bit squeamish or if you are uh, vegetarian or vegan, you might wanna skip ahead uh, to this little time here. Uh, we'll put a little marker there where you need to go. I'm just gonna undo the legs a little bit. Should be able to find where the joint is and you shouldn't have to put any pressure through the knife. It should just come out come off quite easily. With some uh, good strong scissors and sharp scissors, we're just gonna take this center spine out of the chicken. It can be a little tough. Going through those bones. Right, so uh, we've taken that spine out. We're just gonna chop down a little bit and pop it in a bowl for our stock. There's a, a little bone here, it's kind of near the wishbone, I believe. You just wanna cut that just a little bit. You just wanna press down on the breast and you'll hear it crack a little bit and that's gonna flatten it out. So, there you go, that wasn't too bad. We're now just gonna place it into our tin. First of all, we are just gonna season the chicken with salt. Then we're gonna add the spice rub as well. So make sure you use plenty of salt. So we're seasoning the top and the bottom with the salt. Uh, now we're just going to add some of the seasoning, some of our jerk rub uh, onto the bottom, flip it over and then rub it onto the top as well. Just want to make sure that this rub covers the whole chicken. Now uh, this chicken has kind of naturally done it for us, but these chicken wings, if they're out like this, you want to just tuck them just underneath the chicken. So that is our chicken marinated. We're now going to pop this into the fridge for at least an hour. Ideally you want to do this the night before. Now we're just going to pop our chicken that's been resting. We've taken it out of the fridge for about half an hour. We're going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil over this. And we're just going to add a splash of water in the bottom of this just so that the veg doesn't like overcook and it kind of helps steam the chicken from the inside as well. Pop this into the oven about 180 degrees and it's going to take a good hour or so for this chicken to cook. Now we're gonna make uh, a lovely chicken gravy. If you're making a vegetarian version of a roast dinner, you can kind of do the same kind of principles as this gravy. Obviously you just don't add the chicken or the chicken stock, use the veggie stock instead. So we're gonna roast uh, the onion, peppers, carrot, garlic. We're also gonna add some uh, chicken wings and some of our trimmings from our chicken. When I had the conversation with Esme, she recommended this browning seasoning to put in the gravy. It should help bring another kind of richness and as a layer to our gravy as well. In the recipe, I will have instructions on how to make a vegetarian gravy as well. We're gonna roughly chop our veg, put it into our tin. And then we're gonna get our bits of chicken that we got from the carcass, pop those in, and then all of our chicken wings as well. 
We are just going to drizzle a little bit of oil over this, but we're not going to put any salt on yet. The reason why we're not going to put any salt on is because we want to season it later when we kind of like bring it all together. Now we're just going to pop this into the oven, 200 degrees, for around 30 minutes. We've got that lovely golden colour on our chicken and the veg has kind of got a little bit golden and toasty as well. So we're just going to use a potato masher and we're just going to mash the chicken down just to try and help release some more of the juices and flavours from it. Using a wooden spoon, you're just going to want to scrape off uh, some of that real good kind of fawn at the bottom. Okay, at this point we're now going to add some chicken stock. And I'm just going to pop this back into the oven for about 10-20 minutes. We're going to take our chicken wings and veg out of the oven again. We've got a fine mesh strainer in there. So we're just going to try and catch the big pieces. You can see there's a, a layer of fat. So we're just going to use a ladle. And we're just going to just gently pull some of that fat away. With a little tiny whisk we're just going to whisk this up just so it can turn into like a bit of a paste because what you don't want to do is add the flour into the the stock and then you just get lots of flour in your gravy tiny whisk that together as well and then we'll pop that back onto the stove and we'll just kind of let it simmer down and let it reduce and get even more flavorful Next thing we're going to make is another thing that you can make in advance. For these Yorkshire puddings, we have three eggs, a good pinch of salt, 100 grams of flour, 100 ml of water, and about 150 ml of oat milk, which you can replace with milk if you want. I'm going to use some vegetable oil. You can use olive oil if you prefer, but veg oil has got like a, a higher cooking temperature so the oil can get a little bit hotter without smoking too much. The oven's about 200 degrees, you want to have it quite hot. Uh, and on the middle shelf as well. So we've got a large bowl, we're just gonna add all the ingredients in. It doesn't matter what order you're doing it in. Uh, gonna crack in uh, three eggs. Gonna add 100 ml of water into the jug. And then we're gonna just top that up to 250. You're gonna treat this a little bit like a pancake batter. So you don't wanna whisk it so it's really smooth. You don't wanna agitate the gluten too much in the flour. So we're going to just pour this back into our jug and we're just going to let this sit for about five minutes. If you don't overwork the mixture, it's ready in like five minutes. So this mixture makes 12 Yorkshire puddings and you want to pour the batter in so it's about half full because it will puff up quite a lot. They've been cooking for probably about 25 minutes now. So you can see the lovely crisp and fluffy, put a little bit of cling film over the top, or even just a tea towel. And you can leave these overnight and then reheat them. We're making the nut roast as a side, uh, but if you're making this dish as a vegetarian dish, the nut roast that we're making is vegan. For this nut roast, we are using onions, peppers, plantains, sweet potato, mushrooms, kidney beans, and we've got a selection of nuts. Let's go making this. So we're gonna get our sweet potato and we're just gonna peel it. We're gonna use one half in the recipe and the other half we're gonna put on the top. Do the same with the pepper. We're gonna have half the pepper in our mix and half the pepper as kind of garnish. I am just gonna pop our nuts into the bottom. So we're just going to add about um, a tablespoon of uh, our jerk seasoning. It's going to add a good pinch of salt to this as well. And a good plug of oil. This is the texture that I'm looking for. I'm looking to have like a few chunks. Um, I kind of prefer it having a bit more texture. They're just really, really smooth. For this nut roast, we're going to use plantains. I wanted to use the plantains um, as it's quite a, a traditional Caribbean uh, kind of food. 
Um, and I've tried cooking it in a couple of different ways, uh, but I figured um, doing this nut roast was the best way. Slice into the plantain. So I'm just gonna fry these off. I'm gonna get some of our cooked plantain. I'm just gonna layer it on the bottom. We fried it off slightly just to give it a little bit of color. And then we're just gonna spoon And then we're just going to get some of our onions and peppers that we sliced up and we're just going to top that, drizzle a little bit of olive oil over that veg. This nut roast uh, is going to take about 30 to 40 minutes in the oven. I'm just going to pop this on the back while we start prepping our potatoes. So next we're gonna move on to the roast potatoes, another very important element to me uh, for a roast dinner. Uh, lovely crisp roast potatoes that are kind of fluffy on the inside. We are gonna keep the skin on the potatoes. Um, I just prefer it. It's got loads of flavor in the skin of the potato and it helps give it that little bit of crunch. So we've got a pan with just a little bit of water in and we're just gonna chop these up into about quarters. Salt potatoes in a pan of cold water you bring them up to the boil and then when they get to the boil you want to cook them for about 10 minutes so our potatoes have been cooking for about 10 minutes the best way to get really nice fluffy crispy potatoes is you pop the colander or lid back on and give it a good shake it's going to help give it a little bit more it's going to fluff up the potatoes and give it the those little edges to like crisp up in the oven Okay, so you want to do this part very carefully uh, just because that oil is going to be nice and hot. Um, I'm just going to pop potatoes in. Always pour away from you. And then we just want to give it a little mix of salt. And then we're going to pop them into the oven at the top shelf. Our chicken has been cooking really nicely and we're going to take it out of the oven now. I've put a little bit of um, tin foil over the top just so it doesn't like get too golden and too brown. But I think that looks pretty beautiful. So we're just going to pop this chicken on the back and we're just going to put that tin foil back over the top and just let it rest for about 10 minutes. All the lovely juices that have come out of the chicken and have come out of the veg, uh, we're going to add that into our gravy. While the chicken is resting, we're going to put the Yorkshires back into the oven for about 10 minutes, just so they can get a little bit warmer and crisp up again, ready for tasting. Another side that we're going to do on the roast dinner is some tender stem. We're just going to roast it off really nicely. Um, very simple, and it takes about five minutes to cook. Okay, so our chicken has been resting for a moment, so we're now just gonna carve it up and plate it on our serving dish. I'm gonna get some of this all-purpose seasoning. I'm just gonna toss this. The lid off. And then I think we have a very impressive looking nut roast. So you can see the lovely layers. You've got the kind of peppers and onions right at the bottom. So we've got our gravy. We've just reduced it down. I'll put it into this pan instead. And there you go. There is my two-tone inspired roast dinner. It's like a nice little bit of spice, but it's not overly spicy and the Yorkshire puddings you can hear that crisp it's just just the best I think that's a really really nice nerve roast it's got like nicer layers of texture because we didn't go too fine on the on the mix and the plantain kind of is like another texture and then you've got the the peppers and onions right at the bottom as well they've got a got a lovely roastiness on them. That's really delicious. It's got a little bit of spice 
Um, the chicken breast is incredibly tender. There's a little bit of sweetness coming from the sauce, which is delicious. The nuts give it a really nice crunchiness. It's got that little bit of pan fried taste to it, which is really delicious. The roast potatoes with the skin on taste amazing with that spice and with the gravy. They, in a way, kind of taste like mini, little mini jacket potatoes. That nut roast is really delicious and it goes super well with the potatoes. The plantains are incredible and they really give a lot of character to the nut roast and they really help balance out the nutty flavour of the nut roast itself. The Yorkshires, I can't believe they're made with oat milk, they taste incredible and they are, I don't think you could improve on Yorkshire puddings, but this is an improvement. Even if I do say so myself, it's a, it's a pretty damn good dish. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been a lot of fun cooking this meal. I would love to see you all cook it at home as well. Don't forget to check out all the links below for the two-tone exhibition. Go and check it out if you're around Coventry. A massive thank you and a big shout out to Esme's uh, for the kind of inspiration and the seasoning that we used for this roast dinner. You can also check out their website. There'll be links down below. Uh, they do ship out their seasoning around the UK. So go and check them out if you want to try and replicate this dish. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more from me and behind the scenes, uh, go and check out my YouTube and Instagram page at Knit Slips. Uh, there'll be links down below as well. Um, I hope you all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.